<laughs> in all your reels, you smile. Oh yeah, I love smiling. Yeah, so <laughs> like great these, teeth, man. I smile too. Thank you, thank you. I love my orthodontist. I hate that he retired. He's such a good dude. <laughs> <Great amount. laughs> Bro, Chris and I were were watching because like always before you know we have like a guest. Like I'll do a little research and see like content and merch. Like what is this person like putting out? Um, and yours is super well rounded. Thank so, you. Yeah, but we were watching your reels, and I was like, oh, cool, anime, oh, transition. I was like, damn, look at that smile, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, it's every video. This is a secret. <laughs> like, he touches that <laughs> up post-edit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable Podcast. Today we have JP with us, also known as JP Tron Walker. Thanks for joining us, man. Dude, thanks for having me. How did awesome name start? You. What I wanted to do is something like really nerdy. So I can, and I didn't want to just do like JP Skywalker, and I'm a huge fan of Tron. And I wanted to do something that I didn't think someone else out there would think. So I just mixed Tron and Skywalker together and put JP in front of it. Uh, I tried J two, yeah, J two P two and J three P O. I like and I like those. They're great, but yeah. a lot of other people thought of them. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I was like, you know what? What's something that would be very specific to me that is very incredibly unlikely that somebody else would take? Listen, so. they're two pretty different spectrums, but they're yeah. pretty cool together. I'm not gonna lie, I do like both universes. They're Thank both you. Disney at this point now. <laughs> yeah, at this point, yeah. not not back then they weren't, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Tron was. But yeah, my yeah, old screen like name used to be Hand Solo. Hands, Hand Solo. There you go. <laughs> right. That's pretty good. I feel like it was hard coming up with a name, yeah. like oh, early yeah. on, dude. Like a lot of pressure on the Instagram handle. It's true. And then I feel like it got consistent at a point where a lot of people it was just like, be an adult, do your full first and last name underscore tattoo, mm-hmm. you know. And then it was like, okay, I'll just do that or whatever. Zero creativity. You weren't around for AIM, but I had so many AIM emails. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was another one. That yeah. was like attached to your identity. Yeah. Like you bro. better not make a dumb name. My mom questioned me. She goes, Why is it dope Danny? Goodbye. If they haven't you thought about my aim in forever, I think mine was like Fen Tuzler, something like that. So just like I didn't even know what it was. It just it was a blink song <laughs> off the Buddha album. So I was like, Oh, that's cool. No one else has that. Fire. I haven't thought about that in forever. <laughs> my aim name. <laughs> you didn't have aim, right? No, I have no. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> that was pre nine eleven, man. How old are you? I'm 22. Holy shit! Yeah. Okay. Wait, how old are you? I'm 34. Oh, you're yeah, killing it, dude. They had a whole <laughs> assembly on cyberbullying, and like they were show like about aim, and they were like showing us um, examples of it, and for whatever reason, the bully in their example, his screen name was I'm a pony. <laughs> and I thought that was hysterical. So then I made that my screen name. And then everyone in the assembly thought the bully was, was coming after them. Oh. <laughs> That's I, not that I was like bullying. They're just like, they would come to school and they'd be like, ever since we had that assembly, I think he follows that guy. Like the deep fear of he's ponies. He's me up now. You become like a, a creepy pasta thing where it's just like. <laughs> The, the pony Chain guy mail. showed up every yeah. time the assembly happens. Pony shows up. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, I leaned into it. You know, I was like, "All right, this is who I." Oh, am. you had this to. It now. Yeah. You had to. <laughs> Bro, the sheer amount of chat rooms there were was endless. You can put bands. I was in a Creed chat room once, only because it was hilarious. Okay, yeah, I, I used was to go to a lot of Blink One Two ones. Me knowing that I was going to judge you for that. Like, <laughs> Listen, bro. <laughs> Talk to you about Nickelback, but Creed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of like chat rooms. Yeah, it's like you're a little person, but like all you're doing is going in a room and like chatting with people. Yeah. and then they'd be like VIP rooms. Like you're not allowed to chat with these people. <laughs> the, cool, the cool kids group. Yeah, there was bro. like classes within the. <laughs> bro, it wasn't fun, but ever, a lot of people did it. My mom used to be, "Honey, never put your photo, and never put where you live." Oh, and then gosh. MySpace happened. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Now I've never been in a car oh, yeah. with strangers. Now we have Uber. The yeah. world is sick. Now people know exactly where you live. Yeah, that's yep. terrifying. I mean, I still don't think any of that stuff is as bad as, like, Cam's generation and what he's grown up Oh, with. no, it's terrible. Yeah. You kids don't even go outside to play, bro. Uh, <laughs> we yeah. used to run around playing Manhunt. Yeah, 
they all meet up by the energy box. Bro? She bought have a rocket have, <laughs> have you ever created a game based off your imagination? What's that? Have you ever played pretend? No. <laughs> PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> They're in like VR. <laughs> My first console was like a PS2. I was Damn. advanced, bro. You don't even know what Game it's cast. like to try to download your favorite song and it's just porn. <laughs> Yo, I did you fuck around. With, I did. I was about to say <laughs> okay. I did fuck like, around with LimeWire. Okay, fucking did you? That Yo, was kind of way back. That's in like right I was bootlegging my own M&M you didn't chat songs. With no one online. No, dude. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in like there was like other things to do that with. Drugs? Like what? I don't know. I feel like I'd like, rather like chat with Xbox people on like shit. RuneScape or some. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He looks like he knew something. I know. I, did, I I played Fruit Ninja mostly. <laughs> <laughs> that was my like stay up till three o'clock in the morning. I'm like I could beat the score. I swear, <laughs> dude. Because Seth and I would always play the app games on the phone, mm-hmm. and you're like limited to how you can like conversate with people. It's usually like emojis and stuff like that. Okay, but I you like can it. still bully people. Oh with yeah, that. like if. You score on them and you just give them thumbs down. Mm-hmm. You know? Just, just or like the spam. I like when you win. Yeah. You like spam. Like oops, oops, oops. Yeah, like you won. Yeah, bro. I was favorite. playing this like golf game where you'd like play against someone, and every time they'd like shank it, I'd just be like, "Nice shot, <laughs> nice shot." <laughs> nice I played shot. At the eight ball pool, and like yeah. you can buy uh, like like uh, character packs because like it's like the same thing. It's like selected responses, gotcha. but you yeah. can buy response packs that are like mean. Bro, I bought when someone them. would <laughs> miss a putt and you're just like, you're good. Yeah. You're, good. <laughs> you're like, thanks, thanks, yeah. thanks. Yeah. So you guys were monsters. See, I don't play games anymore because it got so mean. Like I'd come home and I'd be like, oh, yeah, cool. I'll play Call of Duty or League of Legends. And it was so toxic that I was like, I can't do I this. I only play single player games now. Dude, I, yeah. I didn't right? start like that, bro. Someone Hogwarts did Legacy. it to me and hurt Someone my feelings. You. And I'm like, cool, I'm going to be a terror in this game. No one's going to hurt my He's bringing, the, he's bringing the pony out. That's what he yeah. is. I'm a terrorist it's always now. been there. <laughs> it's always been there. There's nothing like being a menace online. What was the first game you ever played? Ooh, Think that's back. a great question. It was a NASCAR game on PS2. God, you're so white. Yeah. It's not the answer. I was that and then probably like, I want to say like Vice City. GTA. Yeah, <laughs> Vice City was probably my first game I like dove into. And I was like eight, so I should have been playing that. <laughs> I mean, everyone like grows up playing my, other stuff. My first game? I had to have been Super Mario Brothers. Like Super Nintendo. Super what was Mario the first World? game that like sucked you in where you're like, yeah, I could play this like all day? Ocarina of Time. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I like I, I even did like the stupid time trial missions to get the giant's knife to be perfect so it wouldn't break every time it hit the ground. Yeah, I only ever did that once. That was the <laughs> first time that I realized like how what what stress meant. Like up until that point, I was like, yeah, I'm pretty good, and I I hated time trial things ever since then. But side so. quests are always harder than the main game. Dude, I know. I mean, it's funny. It's like now I side quest a lot. Like on Diablo, I didn't play the main game for the first like two weeks. I just side quested everything. That's the way. So you could just roll through the story. Like Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I did. I was like, oh, I guess I got to be the story now. Yeah. <laughs> so. Dude, Dude, and there'd be all like the weird like glitches and like ways to unlock stuff. Like even in like... S- Super Smash when it was like leave your Xbox on for like 24 hours to get Mewtwo or whatever. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. Just like weird things and like how those Easter eggs have like evolved. Yeah. We didn't have fucking the internet back then. We right. had to like either word of mouth or it was on the... Uh, oh, you had to get or the, the guide. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, the, the game informer. call in. That too. But you, oh, like the to, shark, the game sharks. That the was another shark. one. That was yeah. another one. Mm-hmm. I remember going to Blockbuster, couldn't afford to buy it, so I would have a piece of paper and I'd try and write it down <laughs> before the manager. Nice. Like, it's like, uh, what was the the uh, the Tie Fighter? No, uh, fucking. Oh, can we cuss on this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, just sweet. fucking did. <laughs> <laughs> Star Fox. I was like, you about to say? no, uh, no, it's Star so. Wars. It's, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Rogue Squadron. Mm-hmm. There That's you what go. It was. Yeah. That game was impossible to beat, so I had to cheat, and I had to make sure my parents didn't know, because the only way that I would get a new game is if I beat the one I currently had. Um, so and you then cheat. You couldn't let them know you were cheating. I couldn't let them know I was cheating, uh. but what they didn't understand is how impossible that game was to beat. Yeah, or maybe so, they did, and they just didn't they want to like, buy you a game. They were like, hopefully he doesn't buy another game. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's like, a, he's like, he like looks up 
like <laughs> hardest was game. the hardest game. And I, I like that I pulled out a fake cell phone. Like he was gonna look it up. It was like 1998. <laughs> right. He didn't have a cell phone. A bubblegum <laughs> cell phone. <laughs> yeah, I think my first one was Banjo Kazooie. That's and a I, great. Game. I still play. I I got the the Xbox S so we can all play Hogwarts. And I've been playing Spyro on uh, Banjo Kazooie this entire time. Do you oh. know Banjo Kazooie, dude. It's the weirdest thing. You're like a, a little kid. And you're playing this, and all of them are like, wah, 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 yeah. wah, wah, wah. Oh, you like it's a know, bear and a bird, baby. You like understand it. Yeah, of you're course. like, yeah, he wants me to go get all the coins. I don't even have That's to read the saying. captions, dog. I know what they're saying. Yeah. yeah. I'm a platform guy. Same. I love. Oh, yeah. I have a, I have a laptop I've used twice. <laughs> like a gaming laptop I got, like, to play with friends. I, I booted it up, did all the stuff, and I used it two times, and it just sits there and gathers dust. <laughs> Yeah, going back to LimeWire, I ex- well, I'm not going to say accidentally. When I downloaded the R. Kelly video, because it was like the thing back then. <laughs> right, right. As soon as I told my brother, he's like, you needed to throw the computer away. I'm like, <laughs> it's why? all right, That's how it works. I go, hey, I'm oh, like, first of all, she's done. my age. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, like, oh, I'm like, I'm in the clear. I was like, what? I was like, the R. Ke- uh, and I was like, oh, yeah. shit, that's what you're talking about. I was so confused for a second. Usually, yeah. one I, I think about back then, it was like two girls, one cup, and then oh, that was already Kim middle Kardashian school. Kardashian was yeah. the other one. Yeah, those were the two that I, I remember being everybody talking about. I still have neither. I've seen neither of those. You want to watch it? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is it yeah. weird that Insert everyone's watching it? <laughs> everyone's watching like that's fucking disgusting. I'm like, oh, send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> that was everybody though. Yeah. Like. I had, I had a very traumatized, the first time I ever went to a recording studio, I was the first one to finish my tracks, and the, the guys that were recording us, they were just watching gross internet videos, and I was like, yeah, I'll check it out, <laughs> and I saw, like, the, the BMA, the BME, oh, Pain the Pain Olympics, Olympics. Yeah. and oh. after that, after that, I was like, anytime somebody says, oh, you need to watch this, I've never fucking watched it, so, like, <laughs> whenever, because uh, you went right to the top, yeah, as, and it's it still traumatized me. Yeah, it's like yeah. I was like thirty four now. I was recording at sixteen, so that long ago. <laughs> I couldn't believe that many people wanted to like fuck their dick up. Ah, uh, dude, that 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 particular one you're talking about. I just I remember going home. My parents were like, yeah, how was it? And I was like, I'm a changed person. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> like, it was, was bad. Like, I sought the guidance counselor. Today. <laughs> <laughs> I did see my guidance counselor a lot when I was in high school. <laughs> Not for that, but so when did the recording start? Yeah. Oh, I, I did music when I was younger. Uh, I was uh, trying trying to be a musician uh, yeah. from the age of like 15 to 23, I think was the last time I did anything music-wise. Um, so yeah, that that spans like eight years, I think. I was trying to be a... I was in a metalcore band yeah, yeah. <laughs> that same. nobody's ever heard of unless you were from the West Coast. <laughs> same. We were probably in the same band. <laughs> <laughs> same shows, same Live to band. forget, man. Like, <laughs> I think I see 23 is a cutoff year because that's when I stopped playing. <laughs> yeah, that's when you, yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a tattoo artist. Like, I, I loved drawing already. Uh, I'd met a lot of tattooers through music. So I was like, oh, man, they, they seem like they enjoy themselves. Whereas, like, here I am in a band with, like, four other people, and we're just constantly arguing. I was like, I don't, I don't want to do this. <laughs> a few of the ones that I was in was Fear the Aftermath, which is the most, like, 2005 hardcore <laughs> band band yeah. ever. And then Fading Out Silence, which Woo! I never understood that name. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't Does that mean you're loud now? This. You're fading out the silence? Or? Yeah, dude. I, when, I, when I joined the band, they were already established. So, it was like, I just, I was like, yeah, I'll just... Whatever your whatever your guys' history was, sure. I'll join that. So, what'd you play? Uh, I played guitar live, but I but in recording I did guitar, bass, and then a lot of like mixing and mastering. Same. I liked recording a lot more than I liked playing shows and whatnot. So that was my favorite part. Dude, I think we're the same person. <laughs> you're wearing a turnstile shirt. Your your hats poster. backwards. My hats yeah. backwards. My, <laughs> do you like the Mighty Ducks movies? <laughs> 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 we're best friends. <laughs> That's what this hat is. It's the Mighty Ducks hat. <laughs> the show was even kind of fire. Like, <laughs> it wasn't bad. It, it wasn't, wasn't bad. bad. Yeah, a little campy, but it was fire. Uh, were you ever in a band, Cam? Sick. Never been a musical person. You've never been a musical person. No, I got a guitar. Never played it. It was too loud. I got an electric guitar. <laughs> That's yeah. where I fucked up. You're like, this is me Headphones, now. baby. <laughs> yeah, I That's played it for like two days, and my mom was not having it. No. No. 
But then, but you said art was always in the picture. Oh yeah, I've been drawing since I was a little kid. My dad is a, he's an artist. He's a painter. He draws Ooh. a lot. And uh, I was all I always had a. <laughs> what was that? Is that Kyla? Kyla <laughs> interrupting us in the background. Are you on? Your hey, don't mind yeah. to the unicorn <laughs> behind me. Sorry, we're not interesting enough for Just you. Scrolling through to reels. do your fucking job. Not with that song. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're interrupting right now. Oh, it's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> Just wait for her to drop some more. Bro, I heard it later. echoing off the tape <laughs> <of your> forehead. <laughs> the absolute <laughs> reverb on that forehead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so your dad's an artist. Oh, yeah. I was like, where were we at? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Kyla. Uh, yeah, my my dad's an artist, uh, and he's super awesome. He's really good at it. Uh, but I he that's how I got into like anime and like comic books and stuff. Was it was always around the house. So was that your interest, or did he have some interests and kind of suggested that as uh, far as the anime? I think he just had it on. I just thought it it looked cool. Like it was more violent. There's nudity in it. Yeah, and I'm like, as you know, I'm a I'm a little kid, so I'm like, oh. It's, Boobs and violence. Right. <laughs> so, Everything like, you could ever ask for. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, this is awesome. So, uh, yeah, it just kind of it latched on without me even realizing that it did yeah. until I got older. And I was like, oh, I've just been doing this for a while. So I turned it into a job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it turns out I do love titties. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah. the music scene kind of, like, introduced you into, like, the tattoo industry? Or were you, yeah. like, kind of getting tattooed, like, during those times? Yeah. So, I mean, when a... And those kinds of bands, you wanted to, like, you wanted to look the part, you know. So I wanted to have a sleeve. I wanted to look like a band guy. And then uh, meeting tattooers and stuff like that, I realized that I was like, you're living life the way that I want to be living life right now, which is really cool. Um, and so, yeah, I just started drawing, like, every single day. So instead of playing guitar and recording like I used to, I just switched to that out with drawing. And was this yeah. in your 20s or teen, teen It was years? in my 20s, yeah. Yeah. That's when I went, 20s is when I started taking it, like, very seriously. I was drawing a lot before that, but the 20s is when I was like, I was like, all right, this is what I want to do. And was all this going on in California? Uh, it was a mix. So I've moved around a lot. Okay. Like, I've lived in California, Colorado, Oregon, Arkansas, Georgia, and now Florida. Yeah. Um, so from California, and then I took that with me to Arkansas, and then took that to Oregon. Why were you moving so much? So my stepdad, his job just moved us around constantly oh, yeah. when I was a kid. Um, and then as an adult through just like different, like a young adult, you know, things wouldn't work out and I'd be like, oh shit, I got to go back home. So, and then wherever my parents were was where home was at. So yeah. mm. Oregon is when I really was like really dead set and focused on it. But Oregon tattoo laws are weird. So you have to like, pay for an apprenticeship it's like fifteen thousand dollars or something like that <laughs> this is this is way back so it's like i don't know it was like 2014 when i was asking out there and then uh i started looking at other states and i found who would be my mentor uh his name is poop bird on instagram <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh i was like oh i really like this guy's work so i moved out there and just started bugging that guy so and where was he in Ge athens georgia okay so yeah, he, so he, this is before even tattooing, like or any kind of apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. You found Poop Bird, yeah, right, and you're like, that's it, that's the guy. And you moved <laughs> so, to another state. Yeah, yeah, I moved to out train. there. Yeah, I, I within the first week of being there, I just started bugging that guy. So, and uh, he told me, Wait, you hadn't you hadn't reached out to him prior. Uh, I said, hey, I really like your art. I'm gonna I'm moving out to Athens, Georgia, and uh. But I didn't, like, ask for an apprenticeship over Instagram. I just was, like, I just, like, kind of introduced myself. He followed me on Instagram, and then I was, like, cool. <laughs> That's it. I did. Right. For me. What's in the door? <laughs> <I'm moving> <laughs> like, <laughs> and then after that, I was, I just bugged him. He told me no for, like, a year. Like, he was, like, I don't want an apprentice. So what were you doing out there while you were waiting for him to say yes? I took on a terrifying apprenticeship. Um, wow. Yeah. So there is a very bad shop uh, and a very bad part of the – of Athens, and I took that on for, I think, like, two or three months before I quit, because it was, like, there was lots of guns and drugs, a lot of illegal dealings, like, lots of fights and stuff like that, and I was like, man, this is not the lifestyle I want to have. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
I'd be like, this is exactly what my mom told me would happen. <laughs> yeah. I know. Like, I was like, I was like, damn, my parents were right. <laughs> so, uh, and fortunately, the shop that my mentor was at felt uh, really bad for me because I would still go there and get tattooed and, like, yeah. ask him questions and stuff. And that shop was like, man, this, this kid, he's not a bad kid. And I think we haven't had an apprentice in 15 years, but, you know, fuck it. He's a nice kid. We'll bring him on. So yeah. they were kind enough to do that. Right. <laughs> so, Save you. <laughs> yeah. They they saved me out of a bad situation. It was really cool. So, so yeah, adopted mid-apprenticeship. Right. They <laughs> did. I was the baby of the shop. <laughs> so I did feel like the kid. Like, so. Shout out Mr. Poops. How yeah. old are they? Uh, let's see, Mike, well, his name is Mike, but, uh, he was probably 43, I think when I met him, 42, somewhere, somewhere around there. Um, and then everybody else was in like their upper forties, early fifties. So, and I was, I think I got my apprenticeship when I was 25 or 26. Okay. So you're a little older than mm-hmm. getting the apprenticeship. Yeah. It took a minute to get, cause I wanted to do it the right way. So I was like going in the shops bringing in portfolios, being told, cool, no. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. all right, cool, I'll be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll keep drawing. Yeah. And even when they said, don't come back, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'll, be, I'll come, come back. <laughs> right. What was that a was lot of thing? your uh, early drawings of? Uh, Pretty much what I'm doing now. Yeah, anime, anime, comic books. Yeah, like uh, during the apprenticeship, I, you know, I focused on like more tattoo stuff, lots of script, lots of roses, clipper ships, all that kind of stuff. But um, once I was able to get away from that, I just went back to what I was drawing when I was like 10. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. I feel uh, like that's yeah. kind of like a thing. I did. I did that too. Like I entered the tattoo world and I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to draw? Like, I think I'm supposed to draw like tattoo things, you mm-hmm. know? And then I was hearing the words like flash and like pin up. And like, I was like, okay, I gotta like, I gotta do these. This is what like tattoo artwork was. And it wasn't until like years later I got comfortable and started like drawing my own things and asking myself like can I apply this to tattooing you know because probably when you started as well like most shops there was like artwork that was deemed untattooable oh yeah you know what I mean so it wasn't like explore your creativity yeah. you know it was it, it was, was like, like no this your, is like yeah. what you fucking draw yeah they look at your drawing like yeah right. you can't you get too that. crazy with the colors or like i was trying to bring like street art style they're like no bro like, you can't tattoo that it needs line work yeah. you know i remember the hearing that a lot especially before i became an apprentice like that's why i picked pooper because his art was it was very goofy nerdy comic booky he's he his stuff looks like a uh, invader zim like Ooh, really yeah. exaggerated big eyes, like, you know, eyes pointing in mm-hmm. different directions, <laughs> right. really goofy. And uh, so I saw his and I was like, oh, well, he he breaks the rules, you know, he's right. not, you know, the bold will hold kind of guy or whatever, which is great because, like, I was, I started drawing that stuff, but I didn't love it. I, did, was, I didn't feel like a connection to it. So when I saw other people, like, breaking those rules, I was like, oh, okay, so this can be done. Right. So. I mean, was it pretty much that anime comic style art since the beginning of tattooing for you? No, I wish. Uh, so when I started, I I wanted to play things like really smart. So what I noticed was in the in Athens, there was a lot of shops that were turning away fine line tattoos. Okay, and it was right like Athens, Georgia is right on uh, UGA campus, and so it's all college kids and all these college kids wanted like fine line flowers and like, you know, laurels and stuff like that. Yeah. Just dainty. Uh, and I was like, Oh, I'll I'll figure out how to do that. So I sat and the cool thing about my mentor is he uses like, uh, tight three liners and stuff, which is what you need for that. So I watched him tattoo. I figured out how to do like the fine line tattoos for, so for about a year I was like the dainty fine line guy, but kind of like with tattoo art, I was like, I'm not, connected to this in any way so you know people will come over to get tattoos and they'd see skateboards and anime and you know shit like that everywhere and like you're the fine line right. guy <laughs> like, yeah that's me and i was like yep <laughs> <laughs> so i transitioned to that into doing manga panels because they're they're fairly similar similar there's a lot of like fine lines and stuff 
And then uh, I really wanted to get into doing, like, large-scale color work. But I had been told for so long that, like, you can't just be a specialized tattooer. You have to be very well-rounded. And I believed it until I left that shop and went uh, to Orlando, worked with a few other people, and they were just like, oh, yeah, you can totally just do. Right, you can only do this. Yeah, (laughs) you you can just do this forever. And I was like, whoa, tell me about (laughs) this. Tell me about this dream world you live in. (laughs) So. And how long were you at the first shop? I was with Pain and Wonder for three years, I think. Two, two and a half, three years. Weird leaving your first shop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very weird. <laughs> right, Cam? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't your first shop? It is. <laughs> I, pr- I apprenticed here and everything. First and last, baby. Yeah, I thing. think that's like such a slept on skill, though, like learning fine line, especially in like today's day and age, because... Mm-hmm. I don't know, it's, like, something that I wanted to pick up early, too, like, for the same reason, like, it's what most walk-ins are nowadays. Oh, yeah. And it's just, like, such a useful skill, and I think it does, like, correlate into, like, when you're moving into, like, larger scale stuff, because, like, yeah, it's cool to, like, build some lines, have some nice bold lines, but, like, if you can really get some crisp, like, thin lines in there as well, I feel like it just takes a piece to a whole new level. Absolutely, especially, even for anime work, it's good to have, like, an understanding of, like, fine line for, like, the faces yeah, the and, like, the smaller weights. details. Yeah, like, the mouth is going to be way thinner than, like, jawline. You oh, know? yeah. So. I still use, like, extra type 5, everything in the facial details. And then on the outside, I'll use, like, uh, an 11 round shader. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I'll take, like, the the fine line and then just kind of taper everything off and point it out. Mm-hmm. So it is good to, to know how to use it without blowing somebody out. I was like, going to say, like, all those, like, stupid little fine line tattoos are great practice. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It trained me for what I became. (laughs) And then what inspired you to leave that first shop? So during COVID, I just got really bored. And I realized that Athens, Georgia is really great for, uh, it's like a really cool drinking city. And if you really like football, it's great for that. It has a really awesome football culture and drinking culture. But I love the parks. I love Disney. I love Universal. Yeah. And we, my girlfriend and I always took vacations to go to Orlando. Like, every year we were going to Orlando. I was like, why don't we just move there? <laughs> <laughs> so I just I got drunk one night. I called one of my friends up, and I was like, man, I'm bored. I'm ready. to. I got to get the fuck out of here. And they're like, I can get you in touch with somebody. And I was like, cool. And then literally the next day, I had a FaceTime interview, and they're like, dude, you're awesome. I love your work. You got the job. And I was like, oh, fuck. All right, I guess I got to leave now. <laughs> what, like, was, <laughs> what was, like, the work you were showing them? I was going to say, like, what were you so doing at that time? that was, like, my early anime days. Like, that was – I was pushing it, and then I started only advertising anime. So I still was doing a bunch of fine line stuff, but I was building – myself up as an anime tattooer so i did right. have anime work at that point like a lot of pop culture stuff so i sent that over and how did you you do that like how did as you know a tattooer kind of doing a little bit of everything how did you create like a focus point a direction for yourself i got in some friends tattooed in for free stuff that i wanted to do right so and then I just advertised just that. Right. So I stopped advertising anything that wasn't something I wanted to continue doing. And I still do that. Like, I, I'm still, like, if, if I push my uh, art in a new direction, I'll stop posting something that maybe I did six months ago. Yeah. Um, so I just focused on that. It was really scary at first because I was terrified that, you know, I hear I have this really big clientele for this style of tattooing. Um, and we got another fine line tattoo artist and I just was like, I'm just going to kind of start sending them your way. Yeah. Um, and I kind of started pushing them off on him, but I was scared at first. I was like, uh, am I like fucking myself right now? Yeah, you <laughs> so, practically have to rebuild clientele. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got to make a splash in this new part of, uh, the industry. And at the time too, I didn't know how big anime tattooing was. It didn't seem like it was that big at the time. Now it seems enormous. I don't think it, I don't think it was that big at the time. It wasn't. Yeah. (laughs) And so I think there was like four or five anime tattooers that I knew only did anime. Right. And that was it. Those were to me like, like the, I would call it the Hokage of like, you know, the mountain, (laughs) like the Mount Rushmore of it. Like the, those, there's like those four or five people that I would look at. Um, so I was terrified. I was like, can I do this? Like, do I have a big enough following? Are my right. tattoos good enough to like, you know, have people come to me just for that? So, well, because you're also turning down stuff. 
Oh yeah. At the time, you're like, I don't do that anymore. Yep. You know, I remember when I stopped doing color and wanted to transition to um, black and gray. Like I would still hold on to like some color things because it was hard because I was scared. Of, you know, I'm like, damn, bro, this person wants a full day on this color thing that I don't even necessarily mind doing. Like, am I really going to turn away that work and the money, you know, to do a free thing on my boy so I can post it later, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but then I was like, yeah, because I don't, like, I don't want to do this style anymore. Like, I want to be known for a style, you know? And I feel like it does take some mental discipline to make that transition. Oh, yeah. It's scary. Do you think that, like, new tattooers coming in, should learn a little bit of everything first and transition to a focus point or come right in with a direction? Um, I think I've seen, I, I, I have a, I have a couple of friends that came in and they, they pretty much went straight to specializing in one thing. Yeah. Um, and their careers are good. Yeah. You know, they're, they're good at, they're good at what they do. Um, and I think that if they had to transition to something else, they have the fundamentals through that to do it. Um, I wish that I had just gone to anime sooner because I felt like I spent a lot of time focusing on styles that didn't help me a whole lot with what I do now. So I do think that if, if you have the opportunity, you have a good mentor that specializes in something and they're like, I'm just going to kind of make you do this and not spend a year doing a style of tattooing that you're not going to stick to doing. Right. Um, it's kind of like you like going to college where it's like, you know, you go, you pick the one thing that you're like, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to be an English teacher. Um, so they're not going to, you know, make you go learn psychology or physics. You know, there's not really a point. It's not going to help you out with what you want to do. So True. I my brain is like, are we skipping fundamentals, though? You yeah, that's know? fair. And I'm not, I don't mean I disagree. I'm actually starting to kind of go more on the side of like, yeah, maybe you should just, you know, pick a specialty and like run with it. Um, but I'm like, because you, you did what I did. Like, we just learned everything. Mm -hmm. Like, we, yeah. we took technical aspects that applied to the direction we wanted to go in. But it also kind of gave a choice. Like, whether, you know... You chose um, anime, comic book style. I chose black and gray. There are a bunch of things I learned in fine line or even color that I uh, apply in black and gray, whether it's to pack my black or run my lines or, or whatever it is. Yeah, those but are it, good skills to have for sure, especially packing color. Packing black is, yeah, I mean, I still do that, so. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean, though. It's like, ah, uh, like, because Cam's kind of, you're kind of like, I guess you, you did a little of everything in the beginning, but you I do specialize. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And like, he does 3RL. I really liked, I grew up like graphite, ballpoint, just like one medium kind mm -hmm. of person. It's so like I kind of like gravitated towards his style. So like I would say like after I learned how to pull a line and pack black, I started 3RL stuff. Right. But I'm also wondering if like, I'll still use that today. Like maybe when I was more like street art designing or if it was, you know, color realism stuff. Like if if I'll pull from that today when I'm trying to create a new uh, style on my, my own work. Does that make sense? Yeah, because any time I've like sat down and I've wanted to like add a new element to my style of tattooing that's kind of outside my... Uh, what I, what I do or outside my, my comfort zone. Uh, sometimes I'll just sit down and do a study or I'll go ask a tattooer that does those elements of tattooing and just say like, Hey, is it cool if I ask some questions or, or watch you tattoo? Yeah. Um, or sometimes I like collabing with those people too. Cause then I can actually like feel how they're tattooing. Yeah. So I think that I, I guess like if, if I were to have an apprentice, which, I never will. <laughs> I do. Don't, don't ask him. I don't want an apprentice. Uh, if I were to, I would, my first thing, as I would, I would teach them the fundamentals. You do need to know how to yeah. pull straight lines. You need to, um, there's a finesse to doing uh, uh, script tattoos and stuff like that that's really good for the hand motion and learning like the three-point stretch and everything. But uh, I would just teach them how to, to be resourceful and to 
you know, be willing to go out and learn from other tattooers if they're willing to show them. Right. Um, so I'd be like, yeah, don't be afraid to go ask people. There might be some elements I can't show you. I think, I think both answers can be true. Cause I've heard the other argument where the, uh, you know, there, other tattooers are like, no, I think you should learn it all be well-rounded. And I'm like, that's cool too. Like, yeah. I, th- I think both answers are, I think both ways can be true. I think it also has to do with the environment you're in. Which we didn't talk about. Like, if you're at a street shop, you should probably learn everything. Absolutely. You know, yeah, if you're yeah. in a private studio, yeah, maybe it's, like, more, you know, focused. Yeah. Because like, really you don't want to, like... That's a good point. You don't want to be, like, yo, I'm, like, a specialist, and there's, like, no walk-in traffic, and then you just can't survive financially, yeah. you know? Agreed. That is a really good point. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of different oh, factors. Thank you so much. I think uh-huh. that's the cool thing about this industry is there's so many different directions that you can take yourself in. Like, yeah. and you can try out different ones. Like you, you can be like, I want to be specialized. Do that for two years. Be like, you know what? I kind of like a regular, like nine to five. I don't want to stay at the shop for 10, 14 hours right. doing a tattoo. Like that's what I do. Um, and sometimes it's easier to just be like, Hey, you know, I just want to come in and do you know, bird silhouettes and script and all that kind of <laughs> right, stuff. Right, like, like chill you know, for a second. Yeah, <laughs> making making easy like 100, 150 bucks on shop minimums and just like, oh, man, that was cool. That was an easy day. <laughs> Wait, why won't you take an apprentice? <laughs> I feel like that. So the, the hard part about an apprentice for me is like, I don't know that I am responsible enough as a person. I show up late to most things. Um, and... I would want, if I had an apprentice, I would want them to just be the fucking best. Yeah. And so I would want to kind of see, like, them just be, like, the, a go-getter. Like, I'm not something that I have to, like, sort of, like, push or whatever. And then me just, like, hand them everything I know. And then walk out and just be, like, the the best tattooer that they can possibly be. And... I feel like it kind of terrifies me. Like, one, that's an enormous responsibility. Right. Um, and two, like, I don't know that anybody who, that's asked me for an apprenticeship or approached me about it, I just don't know that I've seen that fire in somebody yet. Like, I, I see people who want to be tattooers and stuff like that, but, like, like, is this something that you do constantly? You know, yeah. the first thing I do is I'm like, let me see your social media. And then I go on their Instagram, I'm like, Where's yeah, your, if they're not like your already art? posting yeah. art, yeah, it's over. Where's where's your art at? I Wait, a lot of mirror pics on here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, pictures of food, you know, just just stuff like that. Or like, you know, if you're approaching me, I'm like, well, where's your where's your card? Where's your sticker? Where, where's your portfolio? You know, like where where where's any of this? Yeah. Um, I'm like, oh, I I don't know. I didn't think to bring it. I'm like, every time somebody asks me for advice on how to get an apprenticeship, I list out all the things that I I did that yeah. worked. Um, but it, let's say you, someone came in that you thought was a suitable candidate. Mm-hmm. Would you take them? Because before you said never, I'll never take an apprentice. <laughs> right. I yeah. feel like the first six months of my apprenticeship, I was like, I'm fine. I'm just fired. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah, but it's yeah, like, I was like, <laughs> my first week, I was like, does he hate me? <laughs> Bro, Cam's, Cam's was so easy. The reason, well, I'm not going to, Cam's was so easy compared to the other ones. Because with Adrian, I think I felt bad. I think I broke him. Like we were Real tough, but he need he needed it. I think. Is he still here? He'll be. Yeah, you'll see him. Okay. Where is, where is <laughs> so Adrian? He he's, he's a huge fan yeah. of yours. You'll definitely meet yeah, Adrian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's coming into it. Yeah. He's like our younger anime artist. He like oh, aspires. Right. But he was just kind of like dicking around, like on like like anyone kind of does their first week or two, and he was just like really happy to be here. And I just pulled him outside one day, and I was like, "Hey, you're fired." <laughs> <laughs> Did you say it just like that? Yeah. Hey, you're fired. And then hey, uh, you're fired. <laughs> I was like, thanks, but bye. <laughs> and then he came back the next day. This is why I love Adrian, like so much more than Cam, right? <laughs> is and he was like, John, could I talk to you? Which just doing that, just coming back to the shop and asking to talk to me, like I not even just me, anyone in here, any tattoo or hey, can I talk to you? Take such balls. And we go outside, and he's like, I don't want to be fired, and I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> and then I was like, you're hired. I love that. You're fucking hired. You're in, dude. Bro, and he kicked <laughs> ass for, like, a year, bro, before he developed alcoholism. Like, he was doing so good, bro. And, and, and it's tough because 
just like myself, like Cam, like Adrian, a lot of times when the apprentices show up, they're so far away from anything that you would want in an apprentice. You know, I mean, obvi- obviously, right? They're they're showing up to learn. Mm-hmm. You know, so like as a mentor, I feel like you gotta you gotta pick those things. Like, okay, well, if I can just see like this, this, and this, and I mean, I think drive is a huge one. Like, maybe they have what it takes, you know, to grow drive, into it. I think that's the tough part is like the is finding finding someone with the the drive that's not just seeing like the you know, the glitz and the glamour and everything of it. Like, they see this end result, and they don't know, like, the insane amount of work that that gets you there, and then the insane amount of work you have to continue doing to stay there. Um, So, like, if it ever happened, and this is not a, just so, um, switch cameras on me, it's not an invitation. I do not not want an apprentice. (laughs) I swear to God, if someone does this, it's your your guys' fault. He's like, this is a test, isn't it? (laughs) It's not a test, dude. (laughs) Someone's going to come up to me and be like, oh, hey, I did all the stuff you said. I'm like, no. I I passed all your tests. Someone's showing up with a sticker and some cards. (laughs) Oh, dude. No, what's funny is I've said that for years now. It still has yet to happen. It is yet to happen when people ask for uh, advice. And I've posted on my Instagram a number of times, like, what do I do? What do I do? Um, and I'm like, dude, you have to show your initiative. You got to show up. You got to go into the shop. You might be terrified. First time I went into a shop to ask for an apprenticeship or even to approach it, I spent three months or more just drawing in my free time. And I was working as a night manager at a grocery store. So when I wasn't tired and working, I was just drawing and making a portfolio. And then I made the shittiest business cards because I didn't know how to make cool business cards. Uh, I wore like a flannel shirt and rolled up my sleeves because I was like, I don't want to look too business. look the part. I got to look yeah. the part, but it's like nice, but kind of cool. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I sat in my car for like a half hour just like, <laughs> I remember cool, that. Call, cool. I, I remember that talk to myself, like in front of the shop in the car. <laughs> you're like, you go in there, your voice goes up a little bit. You're like, hi, I just, hi, I saw, <laughs> will you look at this? <laughs> yeah. I'll do anything. Someone and told then, me to come here. <laughs> the tattooers come up and they're like, hey, that's all right, man. Yeah. And you're just like, I'm going to go punch myself after this. <laughs> I <laughs> spent 12 uh, hours in the bathroom here. <laughs> What's the worst thing someone could say? Like the first sentence that you'd be like, I don't want you. Like, hi, you guys do tattoos? <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be like, so I already tattooed in my house, but like. Yeah, don't say that. <laughs> do not say So like, that. I've been like learning about myself for six months. And it's like, do I get like credit for that? <laughs> oh, dude. I tell folks. So like, and I, I'll still get DMs with like, hey, I've been practicing. I really want to do this. And I'm like, don't do that, dude. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Like, and and don't if you're trying to get an apprenticeship, don't definitely don't say that. That's yeah, such yeah. a red like, just lie. Yeah, yeah, I was like, you will you will definitely fuck yourself <laughs> out of that position real fast. Seal the deal with Sanoderm. This is the shit right here. This is the only tattoo aftercare product I use on my clients. If they walk out the door without it, I don't feel safe. I don't know about you. If you care about your tattoos at all, you need to use this product. It's easy to apply comfortable to wear it's it it can heal anything this shit can heal anything you've seen the videos use code cam sucks for 15 percent off we love it so much we teamed up with them we're giving you 15 percent off use code cam sucks go to standardarm.com after cam we had obviously logan and then Maybe like maybe your like second week, Logan. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna not take an apprentice for a while, you know. Uh, mainly because, dude, forever I was taking on apprentices and they would just leave at like six to nine months, and then I was getting discouraged. I was like, you motherfuckers, like keep teaching you all this shit and you leave, and I felt like it was a waste of time. It's not that. It's not because like I'm helping me, you know, kind of tr- build up on my skill. If those people leave and they start tattooing, cool, you know. But when it first starts happening, it feels like a waste of time. And I had to, like, kind of detach myself from that. And then it was like, okay, well, we have a bunch of apprentices that have stayed, you know, Adrian, Cam, Logan. And I was like, rather than, like, taking on a new one, maybe I'll just, like, work with these guys, like, longer. 
Because every time I take on a new one, all the fo- it's like the new baby. All the other kids get less attention. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, mm-hmm. and then also like with opening new sh- whatever, I was like, do that. So that's something kind of new for me was like, okay, I want to work with these guys like maybe a little bit more intense like later into their career as opposed to just the first year or two. So like even Adrian who's been tattooing what, like four or five years now? Three and a half, four. Right. Like, I'm really trying to stay present in, like, his current work. Like, he's trying to move more towards, like, sleeves. So, we'll, like, design them together. We'll place the stencil together. Come up with sizing. Not on every tattoo, but way more than, like, before, you know? That's so, that's awesome. yeah, like been Most fun. four-year artists aren't getting, like, that guidance anymore. Right. But that's yeah. been, like, really fun. And I think the work's been improving. And it, it's just fun to, like, go back and forth with like an artist, like, and I, the the most recent one we did was this like huge anime leg mm-hmm. sleeve, um, and it was because I don't know a lot about anime, you know, and like he does, but I know about like formatting and, and tattooing, so it was fun, like him, you know, because he has a bunch of reference pictures, and I'm like, okay, like are all these the same one? He's like, no, idiot, they're all different. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, like which pictures go with which pictures? Can we use like a big picture and an accent and a transition? And it's been fun to like create with someone else on that you know it's almost like a collab except he's doing all the application so like doing that stuff is honestly it's way more fun than teaching you guys how to mop a fucking floor (laughs) (laughs) yeah like seeing seeing someone you taught like put together their first sleeve like has to be pretty cool because you're like oh you know like all this work i've put into you is like paying off yeah and he like killed or and then the reverse happened like he was designing that um new jersey piece for tommy Mm -hmm. And he doesn't know anything about New Jersey, and I'm from there. And I'm like, all right, we're going to use this street sign. We'll do this, <laughs> Jersey Devil, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. So that's been fun. Yeah. No, it's, it's cool. Even, like, for, like, even me and Logan, like, it, keeping, like, some of the younger guys around. Because it's cool for, like, because in here I feel like we have, like, the group of the older guys. And then you have, like, the younger guys. And it's all, like, I don't know, like, good competition. Like, me and Adrian can always, like, bounce back and forth between each other. Like, yo, what would you learn recently? Right. You know, and I just feel like it creates a good dynamic it does and and it's n- it's really cool when i'm tattooing to see all you guys like drawing you know i'm like oh, perfect you know what i mean because you really should always be yeah. using in my opinion all the artists at your shop i have seen some like gatekeeper fucking mentor like don't fucking oh, yeah. talk yeah. to him or whatever whatever yeah. and i don't i think why wouldn't you use everything you have you know, at your fingertips to learn from. And I would say that would probably be, like, one of the f- my favorite parts of, like, the apprenticeship you offer is, like, you just being, like, yo, learn from everyone in here. Yeah, like, why bro, not? Like, bro, take as you? much advantage as you can, you know, like, and I think that's been, like, a crucial part of Adrian's development, mine, Logan's, and I do think it helps a lot. I guess it depends on, like, the artist you have, right? Mm. Maybe yeah. Maybe like if you don't trust your artist. It's like yo. Stay yeah. Away maybe from maybe them. I said that a little bit quick. <laughs> but if you have a shop full of guys, yeah. who, like you don't have to babysit. They all know what they're doing, and like you can trust like other dudes to teach your apprentice. Like why not? Yeah. You know, like if you know you have some shit bag and he's the apprentice is like, yeah, he told me to like clean my setup without gloves. You're, okay, don't learn from him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? The first shop I was in, you know, every tattooer had input on what I was doing, and some of information would contradict something yeah, else that i knew yeah. so i would i was just i was always receptive but i'd be like oh cool thanks man thanks for telling me that and i'd be like yeah and my brand i'm like i'm not doing that the like, cool that part about that though is you can always like compare what people tell you too and kind of mm-hmm. just like pick and pull from each person like well from what i've found is like okay i learned something from john i learned something from nate what can i do to like combine these two to maybe like make my own thing out of it oh absolutely know? yeah it's, like that's where it can come in and be super useful I, st- I still do that to this day. I love learning from people. That's why I, that's why I love collabing is I just love sitting down and just being like, what are you, what are you doing? How are you doing that? <laughs> why are you doing that's that? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. That's not how I do things. I want to see how you do it. <laughs> so I, I, I still do that. I still love learning. I mean, shit, I want to, there's uh, this week's designs that I'm drawing. I'm going to change something different because I got bored and I was like, these young kids are going to come eat me alive if I don't keep, <laughs> yeah. keep that fire under my ass. So. <laughs> Like, no, I feel that, man. Oh, and, and also, like, chasing the inspiration, right? Because uh, sometimes you end up doing the same thing all the time. I, I'll get bored sometimes. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to throw something new yeah. and see if it sticks. And it's the same pattern as you talked about before. Like, I'll 
do a couple free ones or discounted ones, or maybe I can convince clients and do a new pattern, and then I'll just post some of those. And then people are like, yeah, let me, I like Like, that. I want to do more of that in that direction. I started yeah, doing yeah. that with, like, I like, I really like pop art a lot, so I started doing that where I started incorporating, like, a lot of uh, pop art comic book on onomatopoeias and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I would started doing that, like, last year, and I was like, man, this is a lot of fun. It so, is, and it breaks cool up the element. piece nice. Yeah. It adds an extra, like, layer and depth yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. It gives it uh, action. Yeah. Like, it reads almost as, like, a, a comic book, so there's mm -hmm. action, there's, like, movement, and because it spells it out for you. Right. <laughs> it's, almost, it's almost like just a panel without the borders, you know? It's like, yeah. a, like a whole scene's going on. That's a, and that happened because I started reading manga a lot again about two years ago, and just seeing how like they would add those onomatopoeias and it would just make it more intense. And I was like, oh, I got to start putting that. I almost see him like do the onomatopoeias first and then draw like right. the characters into the boxes, which is crazy too. That's, you, I don't remember where I was going to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you think like um, as you change shops, you would get like this mass influx of like inspiration? Oh, yeah. It, yeah. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The, um, and I can even see how my styles would change depending on what shops I was in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's like who your friends are. Yeah, you know? yeah, because you, well, it's it's cool to go and watch other tattooers and uh, pick up, like, little things and stuff like that. So um, I feel like you can see, like, all of my influences in my work, whether it's tat uh, other tattooers or, you know, anime or manga artists or even people that aren't tattooers that just do really beautiful art. Right. Um. So, yeah, definitely, I, anybody who goes to, like, a really good shop and says they don't pull influence is definitely lying. Well, you got to. You got to. Right. You're around all these awesome people, so. And I think it's a good thing, and maybe at times it comes off like a bad thing, you know? Like, oh, you're just fucking leaning on this person or whatever. I'm like, yeah, that's what you should do. So, I compare that a lot to, so when I, when I first started doing music, you don't just start writing a song. You cover other songs and right. it gives you structure so you wonder you're like okay this song structure makes sense so you're covering so a lot of your early work will sound similar to the bands that you pull influence from and then eventually you start developing your own style so i feel like with tattooing that's kind of similar like you kind of bite a little bit from the people around you and then you're like oh, okay cool it looks real close to theirs but i'm just going to take certain elements and then apply them with mine so um I feel like that's that's pretty true for most of the people that I've worked with. We've all kind of taken inspiration from each other. Right. So. And I know we were like bouncing around on topics a little bit, but with your life, you said you then moved to Orlando, right? Mm -hmm. And what shop was that? So the first shop I was at was called Arlia. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of that one. So it was a really ambitious studio. It was like, um, like a half a million dollar shop where oh, they wow. wanted it to look like you're when you're going down the alleyway uh each each room so it's like it was like a cobblestone alleyway and each room was like a different theme it was loosely based off harry potter so okay. kind of like diagon alley um and i was there for like eight months I how think. did you find that shop? my what, friend uh, this my, was the interview that you did yeah so my on. friend got now that you explained it, it i've seen it yeah yeah it's no it's not i think they they closed doors in march but uh um yeah my friend got me in touch with the owner and so i was like and he kind of sold me on the idea i was like dude this sounds really fucking rad what was the so, idea so just the, just that so you go down there each tattoo station is like a different thing so you got the candy shop that's kind of like honey dukes and then uh just like different shops and there's like i think there was six six rooms and then you would go around the bend and there'd be like a brick wall and if you push on the brick wall, you'd come into a speakeasy that looked like uh, um, the common rooms from Harry Potter. Yeah. And so that was really, that was cool. I was like, I was like, yeah, that sounds dope. I love Harry Potter. Right. Where's the brick wall? <laughs> right. I was going to say, are you sure it's to run through it? <laughs> yeah. All right. Like, no, 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 push it, push it. No, you got to push it. It was kind of heavy. <laughs> right. So you did, if you ran straight at it, you would hurt yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I would tell my clients, I'm like, now you got to run through it. Go for it's it. It's best <laughs> to be given a bit of a run. They're like, no, 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 don't run, don't run. <laughs> you just like grab my straight. No, I was kidding. Yeah, I didn't think you'd actually do that. <laughs> but yeah, so that was, that was the first shop uh, I was at. And then, uh, and then after that, I went to Sad Fam. So, why did you leave the first shop? The owner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't magical. 
<laughs> he wasn't Harry Potter, actually. He was not Harry Potter. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, him him and I didn't uh, see eye to eye on a few things. <laughs> so. Did you pull anything from the shop, though? Like, were you... Did you... F- Feel upset that you had made the move? Were you still hopeful? Oh no, I'm I'm a super optimistic person. So I was just like, oh, you know, that's okay. Yeah. The cool thing about being a tattooer is that like you are almost never unemployed. Right. Like uh, you can kind of go wherever you want to go. Yeah. Um. So like even uh, leaving Sad Fam, there was like a two and a half month gap before I got the private studio that. I was like, oh, fuck, Uh, what do I do? And fortunately, the local Orlando tattoo community really came in clutch for me and Brian. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, they pulled us in. They're like, yeah, you can guest here. Uh, Shout out to the East. You guys are incredible. Thank you for housing us. (laughs) So, like, we got, like, messages almost instantly uh, about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, see, we're good. Yeah. I cracked open a white claw and celebrated. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. So, th- so you left the Harry Potter shop and went to Sad Fam. Mm-hmm. And how long were you there? Mm, almost. It would have been would would have been two years, I think, in July. I think, yeah. And our was the first shop close to the parks? No, not really. It was like mm, maybe like a half hour. Okay. Well, to the Disney, maybe twenty minutes to Universal. Yeah. So. Well, I just asked because I know that was like a selling point on moving for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was, it, it's, I had a great time still. Like, uh, you know, I still had a lot of good memories there, even though there was like weirdness with like the management and the owner. It's still, I still had a blast. Like, so I, I made the, I think I made the move out before things could, like, I could just kind of see where things were going. So that's why I dipped out. And like, how do you hear about Sad Fam? Uh, so uh, uh, Mike actually approached me about it. So, he he knew he wanted to build like an anime tattoo studio. So, and had that. And how long has that shop been open? Two years. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. they, he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna build this shop. You want to mm-hmm. be part of it?" Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, that's how that's how that happened. And then when you like started that, like, would you say that was one of the shops that you're like, "Yo, this is like a cool shop that I'm at." Yeah, yeah. De- at the time, I was just like, "This is one of the craziest." most ambitious studios like I, I was like I was joining and it's it, it is such an elite team too like uh uh Brian wasn't there at the time but like all the the people that I was working with I was like dude this is such a rad squad and I'm still tight with like pretty much everybody there yeah. so because I feel like there's always that one shop mm-hmm. where you're like this is different than the other shops. Yeah. I don't know if that was the one for you or if it was the one before. Oh, it's they're still both like uh, I will definitely credit both studios for being very ambitious. Like yeah. they kind of just wanted to create their own pocket in this industry that was very different than anything else that had been done. And uh I I really got to credit them for that cuz that 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 shit was pretty cool. Like uh Sad Family has like this enormous like projector TV screen thing. And just play like anime all day and stuff like that. Bunch of TVs, like video game stations and stuff. So it was it was a cool chill area. Right. So, so yeah. And then you were there for two years. Yeah. And then it became time to leave, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Similar thing with Arlia. Like the the owner and I definitely we came to a, a fork in the road and we were like we're not going to get along anymore. So yeah. Uh, me and a few others like left the studio for that. So I I haven't kept in touch with uh, the owner. Uh, but everybody else, I'd still talk to you there. So, would you say it was maybe just like growing in different directions? Um, yeah, I guess that'd, that'd be one way of putting it. Like sometimes, person, there's just certain personality types that just don't mesh well. Yeah, and uh, we tried to make it work out a few times, but I just was like, this, this isn't, this isn't working. Well, it's cool that you tried. Yeah, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's like you. I did my best. Uh, like. I did my best given the circumstances that I was under. So, right. Yeah. Cause I feel like that kind of became like news, you know, it was like, yo, <laughs> this is happening. <laughs> I got I'm, I'm sure so like times. wasn't maybe ideal for you. You know, I know for me, like if big changes happen, I don't always really want to talk about it or like have it put out there for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. Cause, uh, there are a lot of questions. I think that that shop has like, garnered a lot of hype at least within the anime tattoo community 
Um, and so having, you know, that many bigger artists like leave the studio one after the other definitely definitely leads to a lot of questions <laughs> i mean how was dealing with that i'm sure people were reaching out and trying to get answers from you yeah um it was fine it was pretty much all support like everybody was really supportive um oh, nice. like no matter but, what you do we support you yeah type stuff? yeah ever like i had a lot of friends reach out like a few of them called which you know no one calls anymore everyone just like text <laughs> right or so down. i had a few friends like hey you all right? Is everything you okay, okay, man? <laughs> like, yeah. you say, do, you, do you need to come out to California or something for a minute? Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, dude, thank you. No, I'm good right now. Uh, but, yeah, no, it was, it was mostly just all support. And then, like, a crazy amount of opportunities started happening. So I had a lot of people sit down and. <laughs> <laughs> I just fist bumped the mic on accident. Oh, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I, watched, I watched your face, then him just. <gasps> <laughs> that stare me. I feel like that. That. Like, the anime community is, like, a super positive community. Yeah, like yeah. in general. For, yeah, for the most part, like, the, it's, it's really rad. Like, everyone, like, it's a lot of love in the comments. And, like, like uh, on Instagram and stuff, like, people ask, like, what bigger platforms do you get more haters? And I'm like, nah, dude. Not, not from the anime community, at mm -hmm. least. Like, you no. get the super occasional, like, mean comment, but. You get the ones that are, like, mad about, like, getting animes wrong. And then, yeah. you know, but, like, <laughs> besides that, I feel like most of the community is, like, pretty chill. Like, super nice people. Yeah, yeah most, of, most of it's pretty chill. Like, I know the uh, stereotypes that exist out there, but when I do, like, the conventions where it's just, like, just a bunch of anime nerds, dude, I don't even like tattooing at them. I just want to hang out with everybody. Yeah. So, like, I'll just walk around drinking my shit. Plot. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, the last year when I did Anime Inc., I didn't tattoo at all. I just walked around. So I just... Burping White Claw, just yeah. talking to everybody. We'll, so. be, we'll be doing Anime Inc. in Richmond. Oh, shit. I will not be there this year. I'll be at, in Vegas at when we were young. Nice, yeah. so, sorry, Blink-182, Green Day. Yeah, like, I get it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that guy's dad died in a summer rain, and he was still at the Blink show, so there's... Yeah. <laughs> there <ain't> nobody's missing <laughs> that He's shit. Like, <laughs> He's like, I'm not missing this. Yeah. <laughs> it might break up again. This is the last chance I got for another 20 years. You're like, I got to see these guys. I love that. <laughs> Well, you follow. You were kind of following all that close, right? Yeah, I feel like I was getting all my updates from you. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, me and Adrian were both like super intrigued about the situation. I love anime, pop culture stuff myself, so I follow you and a lot of the other guys at Sad Fam. So I was definitely like curious, because like f I would say like from the outside point of view, it looked like everything was like awesome and going well over there, you know. And it's like seeing like all these dudes doing great doing the tattoos they love it's like okay you have a shop full of because i feel like in most tattoo shops it's like you have one dude who does a bunch everyone does a bunch of different styles and they all come together as like a good team for me it was like interesting to see a shop where it's like even though you guys do all different types of anime tattoos it's like okay all these guys are doing anime it's like that's awesome it's like i wonder how this even works you know with like the client competition or no nah, no so the good thing was is like uh there wasn't really any uh, not that i noticed that there was any like real client competition uh i feel like you guys all did a great job of like still differentiating yourselves between yeah. each other was everyone pretty much booked out yeah for the most part yeah, yeah. like I, saw, everybody yeah. was uh i mean there is there is some that were booked out more than others but for the most part like everybody was working like Everybody's got tattoos, so would um, clients hop around to the artist? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. There we definitely clients that were excited to try and collect like all the sad fan members. Yeah, that's cool. So, that is cool. Yeah, yeah we're, we're big on that stuff here too, like client sharing. Like I know it's a problem in a lot of other shops. We handle it really well here. It's like the same kind of thing. Like client comes in, they know the crew, they just kind of want a piece from everyone, you know? Yeah, yeah. Get the like a really cool well-rounded experience mm -hmm. yeah that i always thought that was rad too because then like in a way you're kind of collabing with your friends because yeah. like you're connecting your pieces with theirs so yeah i liked that 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 aspect was cool and a lot of the the uh the happiness that everybody saw like i no i mean that wasn't like like fake or anything like that like i know like some people ask like because they're like yeah from the outside it seemed like everything was tight and i was like it Definitely wasn't always because I have been asked if any of that was like like fake or anything. I was like, oh no, not, like there were good times. Like it wasn't always like gnarly or anything. But uh, you know, things near the end started to get pretty bad, and I stopped. That's when I stopped kind of 
posting shop stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so Yo, I texted Adrian. I'm like, yo, JP's waiting for you. And look who appeared. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm in the shower. I'm on my way. <laughs> Hi, Adrian. <laughs> How's Dude, it going? Adrian won't let me hire another anime guy. No? No. He's like, no, man, I'm taking that business away from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll keep my application in my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because I, because in all your reels, you smile. Oh yeah, I love smiling. Yeah, so <laughs> like great always, teeth, man. I smile I'll, too. Thank you, thank you. I love my orthodontist. I hate that he retired. He's <laughs> such a good dude. <laughs> <Great amount. laughs> Bro, Chris and I were were watching because like always before you know we have like a guest like i'll do a little research and see like content and merch like what is this person like putting out um and yours is super well-rounded thank you fuck yeah but we were watching your reels and i was like oh cool anime oh transition i was like damn look at that smile dude (laughs) (laughs) i was like like, it's every video this is his secret Like, he touches that shit up post-edit. <laughs> <laughs> now you can see. It's like... Dude, you need to do a sticker with, like, a crazy shine on your like, tooth, bro. Dude. Just it's smiling. Uh, my girlfriend actually came up with the idea to have me doing the smile walk-up. So, because uh, originally, uh, everybody we talked to, there's, like, an influencer. They're like, yeah, you got you to gotta show yourself in the video. Yeah. You got to do that so people connect with you but and then the art. And I was like... Okay, I don't I don't know how to do that without feeling kind of dumb. Right. So I did some stuff where I just like would go up to a window and pick my nose or something. Yeah, and uh, I like that better. Honestly. Yeah, <laughs> I was just like I it was smells like, nice uh, and all, but yeah, uh, uh, and like then, wipe it on the dead. <laughs> 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 Booger. <Yeah. laughs> There's a new product I'm working on. You'll really like because of that. But right. anyways, yeah. So, uh, but uh, but yeah. So is it a booger aftercare? <laughs> All yes. natural. <laughs> we'll find out later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't know what to do, and I felt kind of lame. And like some of my friends were doing it, and they looked so cool. And I was like, "Well, fuck, I don't look as I cool doing I could be it." Cool like yeah. That. yeah, my friend, my friend Dan does it. Uh, he does like all the like the hyper realistic like Game Boy Pokemon stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he does like the how I do anime tattoos. I'm like, man, he looks so fucking cool with that right. haircut and stuff. <laughs> I don't look like that. And then uh uh. My girlfriend's like, well, how about while you're tattooing, I just, like, walk up and you just smile at the camera. And I was like, all right. And it's funny because I look so happy, but as soon as it's not filming, I'm so fussy about it. I'm like, I'm stupid looking. Let me alone. (laughs) John took the opposite route. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Bro, as you're talking, I'm like, huh, I advertise all the worst parts about me. I never smile. (laughs) We're definitely getting a photo after this. Like, I have the biggest smile, and you're just like. That's right. Yeah, that's, right. that's that's him. That's that's the photo we're gonna take. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so that's how that came to be. Like she's just like, yeah, you give a nice smile, smile for the camera. Yo, so. but we'll, we we have marketing meetings a lot here, like where the whole shoot shop will group and we'll talk about like ideas and way to improve and stuff like that. And like one thing that is brought up almost every time is like market your face and have like a thing. Like, have, like, one thing in your reel that's, like, different and consistent. You know, maybe yours is your smile. Maybe mine's being sarcastic. But, like, have just something. I think it's so important. Like, if you want to – because now everyone's creating content, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's not just pictures of tattoos. Like, everyone's creating content. So, like, how do you create content and, like, add some personality and stick out, like, make a difference in it, you know? Oh, yeah. So, I think – you're bringing up a crazy important tip ab- about standing out when you're creating, you know, any video. Yeah, do something um, fun. I, I I answered a question, I think it was yesterday or day before, on my Instagram, where somebody was asking, like, how to get yourself out there. And I was like, follow what the trends are, but find a way to make it yours. Like, yeah. like I was like, mine, mine is my smile, which was like an accident that that happened. Right, right. Uh, but and someone made fun of somebody – made fun of me in the comments and this is I've heard this a few times like where someone's like yeah it's like the full house intro or something and uh <laughs> and this one guy was like will you please stop doing that <laughs> what so, smiling well yeah he's like he's like will you please stop doing that it reminds me of the full house intro and so I was like you know what I'm gonna respond to this comment and just have the full house music but every video that I've ever smiled but just those and it's just gonna be that 
and just respond to that and be like, yeah, now I'm really leaning into it. Didn't we do a full house? <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> oh, did you guys do that? <laughs> yeah, like an introduction to everybody. To all the artists. Oh, yeah, damn. they're like waving. And stuff. We'll have to show it to you. It's fucking yeah. great. Even though I had to that use like the... That was one of our first ones. That's yeah, like I had to use the non-copyright version, so it's yeah. not as cool. <laughs> I think it got taken down. I'll find like a... I'll like AI a pop punk version. Like that. Tom DeLong singing it, you know, make it cool. <laughs> so. If he doesn't say time, I don't want it. Uh, that's all he's going to say. Time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> How many W's are in time? I should have worn that shirt today. I have it where it's like the phonetic version of it. I have that shirt. And to think Mark might watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly he, he follows might. you. <laughs> if, he, if he does and he gets this far into it. Hi, Mark. <laughs> I love you. We'll tag him. We'll send it to him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he'll watch it. Though. Terrified. I'm like, does I say anything too embarrassing? When I when I met that dude, I was, you know, you like analyze everything you say when you're meeting someone you think is like yeah. really cool. I 100 percent was like, I was like, don't sound like an idiot. Don't sound like a jabroni. Just, <laughs> just be cool. Just be cool. Do you go less or more when I when I meet like people yeah. I look up to? I I think I think I'm going less. Like I I try to just like not freak out or like if i if i do i'm like all right i'm gonna have a fan moment real quick and then i'll say the fan thing yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah because most most of the time when i meet you know cool people i handle it really well i'm just like yeah it's cool yeah but those dudes that's different as soon as as soon as like you know one of them like i they walked into the room and like it's like hi i'm mark and i'm just like Cool. <laughs> hi, I'm like, hi, I'm Mark. <laughs> too. I'm Mark too. I'm, I'm Mark as well. <laughs> Cam's voice goes like three octaves lower. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? You want a water or something? <laughs> Adrian's like, oh. I should I should have talked lower. That would have been hilarious. Hey, yeah. hey, I'm J- <laughs> hey, I'm JP. Hey, I'm Mark. <laughs> you look behind Dude, me. I go more and I hate it because... Th- I'll, yeah, like, Jake meet someone, there. and I'll be like, oh, like, I'm sarcastic, and I like to make jokes, and then I take it over the line real quick, and then I'm like, you're such a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you just no. said something really offensive. So, I <laughs> I was, so the first night when I met Travis, I was a little tipsy, because yeah. I was like, oh, cool, liquid courage, Yeah, I'll, I'll handle this really well, and I knew it was going to happen, so I was like, cool, they pulled me backstage, and I went and said hey to him. And we were just chatting, and of course, you know, when I go back there, he's he's drumming. Right. Cause that's because he, he's drumming. the most yeah, he's the most determined dude in the entire world. And we started, you know, we talked about that a little bit. And I don't know why, but like I just mentioned the movie um, Whiplash because the yeah, only drumming yeah. movie I know, and I just watched it like two months ago Such on a, a plane. Good fucking movie. We I almost got the way. tattoo. Oh it. yeah, it's a great fucking film. And I just all I could think was I was like, I just mentioned. The only drumming movie ever. <laughs> Parker. You ever seen Drumline with Nick Cannon? You know, yeah. Whiplash. Like, and and I was just like, it was so funny because after I left that, I was just like, yeah, cool. Fuck yeah. that up. Yeah. You're like I, making fun of yourself. You ever seen Whiplash? Yeah. <laughs> nice one, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> like kicking the ground. <laughs> stupid. Of course. Stupid. Yeah. What did he say to that? Did he see it? Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. He's like, I only watched it once. You know, that's all I really needed, and it really stuck with me. And I and I was like, that's cool. He's he's such a he's the chillest dude in the entire world. He's right. so relaxed. Uh, and I because like I've texted him a few times because I I uh, did some stuff for Famous, yeah. and uh, we texted back and forth. And he's the most relaxed, chill sounding guy ever. And uh, so I was like, when I met him, I just I don't know whatever happened to whatever chill I built up. It just left me <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, and my girlfriend standing to the side next to uh, his security guard, and uh, he his security guard's super nice. So I've tattooed him and stuff, and he's super chill, dude. And I'm just like, oh my god, I look like a fucking jabroni right now. <laughs> 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 so the next day, uh, I was like, I'm not drinking today, I'm not having any drinks. I'm just gonna just right. drink water. And then uh, you Mark, go up to Mark, you're like, you ever seen Whiplash? <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, he just he comes out. He's he's wearing a Harry Potter shirt, and I'm just he just introduces himself, and it was crazy. I never like the first time I ever met that dude in person. I don't think I had words. I just was like, Sam. I, I met him hand. at Sunfest, and I couldn't say anything. Yeah, <gasps> nothing. <laughs> you couldn't get out even not, nothing, not bro. I, we did talk, and I 
was gonna ask for a photo, but it was just such a cool moment. Yeah, when that's I was what walking I, away. I'm like, fuck, fuck, I did fuck. the same thing. I didn't ask for a photo or anything. I uh, feel like you're cooler when you do that. But like in your head, you're like, damn. I yeah, like, damn. I wish I got a fucking photo. I, I wish I had proof photo. of this. I know. <laughs> My mom's not gonna believe me. Well, f- well, fortunately, with Travis, I got a picture with him because the security guard was like, oh, he's like, all right, man, get a picture. And I was like. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping you'd ask. I was hoping you'd say that. I was going to play it cool and not say anything. And then, like, the Mark thing, we walked away, and I was like, Where is that I, just have, I just have that in my memory forever. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yo, what if you looked at your camera roll and it's just a selfie of his security guy? <laughs> <laughs> that would be That would be fire. <laughs> No, a better one would be as I'm walking away and he's walking the other direction, I get like the behind the shoulder something. Yeah. I was like, that was him. Yeah. Just so you know. Maybe That's I the back of I hope I hope if he if Mark watches this, he does not see this entire part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got grounded because my parents finally listened to the Mark Tom and Travis show. It's so good. It's amazing. But I was nine years old. Oh yeah. They're like, Oh, we didn't know what the cartoons in front. <laughs> and then they listened to it when we were in the car. It was so bright. You just missed that parental advisory. Uh, I, you know. I thought that was a sticker for show. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a problem. A lot of people ask about my setup and the ink I use. All I use is Allegory ink. We have the white, the black, and the ultra black. This is my total setup right here. Get yours at allegoryinc.com. We got a discount code for you. Unemployable for 20% off all their ink. Again, allegoryinc.com. Another thing I get asked a lot is like, how, how do you get sponsorships? You know, and they're like, oh, I, I reached out and I saw, shot them a DM and I'm like, no, that's not how you do it. No. <laughs> I was like, you got to go there. You have to show them that you love the product. You have to meet them in person. Mm-hmm. And it's a really rare thing too because like the owners of the of that brand are usually the ones behind the booth. So you're talking directly to the people. Yeah, that'll so. be someone super important to the company. Yeah. You know, like. Somebody with influence. So I'm like, yeah, go out there, be friendly, show that you use the product. <clears throat> and like, yeah, just that's the best way to do it. Yeah. And they're all like the, because I'm with uh, Electrum, and they're like the nicest people in the entire world. And too. you yeah, did I wanted an to ink touch set on with them, them, right? Yeah. So what? you did an ink set with them? Yeah. Yeah, I did. What was a, that like? It was awesome. awesome. Yeah, they just, they they asked if, if I would be interested, and I was like, a of course I would. Like, I feel like that's, like, a, a huge a huge thing to have. Like, you know, Michael Jordan's got his shoes, like, and I can yeah. have my own little ink set, you know. Uh, but, yeah, that was that was super rad. And I based it all off of uh, Gundam, uh, Gundam's great color palette. Dude, thank you. Awesome color palette. <laughs> thank and you so much. You, but you made the palette, correct? Yeah, so I picked all the colors. Uh, did but, they send you like primary like bases to mix? Or? Oh no! So I'd, what I did is I pretty much just made like a. I went I went through and I made colors that I've I, <clears throat> I've always had to mix on my own. Um, so the like colors that I couldn't find that existed with like Eternal or any other yeah. brands, and I was just like I really like this this red. Like I I did like a mix of the Eternal Tangerine. I love that red. It's so yeah. it's so cool. But I want it to be a little bit more red and less pink. And so I just made like those adjustments to some of the colors that I liked using and then I just sent it to him and I was like But how did you send it to him? Like in a bottle? Oh no, I did it all on my iPad. Oh yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. No, I didn't I didn't like sit down and mix it at home or anything. <laughs> <It was like, laughs> uh, that would have been cool though. Like yeah. a mad scientist. That'd have been cool to like record me doing Yo, that. Like that would be good content. I would watch that. That would be great <laughs> making content. Color, making colors. Like they're like, Yeah, he sat there and Mixed it till he got like that perfect, you know, that perfect thing. But yeah. no, I just I I knew what mixes and blends that I made, so I I knew what colors that I really liked making, and so I just went through and made a a set of them and was like, this is what I use in almost every single tattoo, and then sent it to him. And then was it just um, to put your name on something, or did they work work out a deal with you? So Electrum's really awesome. They do a a a deal where I get a percentage of the sets that sell. So if you, if you buy individual off their website, I don't think I get anything off of that. Right. But if you buy the JP Tron Walker set, I, I, I get some percentage off of that. So sure. How did, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say like, how did that come to be? Because first time I even saw Electrum or heard of them was like at that Miami, uh, anime ink con. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, kind of like seeing, I liked their branding a lot. It was super cool. And then I was seeing just, like, all these, like, color guys, like, out of nowhere just switching over to them, like, like pretty much like that. Like yeah. How, how was, like, that switch for you? Like, what were you using before? Like, what was some of the reasons that you might have wanted to switch to Electrum? 
So I used uh, Eternal before. I used to have an enormous color palette. Um, and then Electrum came from the f- second, I think the second uh, anime ink that I did. And um, at the time, the person I was talking to, like the rep or manager, I don't know the exact position he was, uh, Christian, um, he he got he got in touch with me and like gave me some things for free to try out and stuff like that. So I got to, I got acquainted with the brand through that. And um, yeah, I just, I really liked it and sat down and learned that color palette and was like, yeah, yeah, this is really awesome. I like it. And, um, but most importantly, the people behind it are fucking rad. Like, like uh, everybody, like Andy, Rob, all of them, like all the people that run it, dude, are so sweet. So I know that I'm in good hands with them because I can talk to them directly. Um, and they get back to me really fast. So, like, I think that, and that's what I like about their brand, too, is, like, they don't just work with, like, really big names. They work a lot with, like, smaller people, too, because they like those people. Yeah. Because, like, they show up, they do the thing we were just talking about. You show up, uh, you buy the ink, you show interest in the product, and you make an effort. So, uh, that's one of the many reasons I like that brand and ghost ghost is doing the same thing. I was gonna ask the same thing. Like that yeah. same convention I found out about ghost tattoo and like their products are sick. That was their I debut and they're yeah. crushing it. And dude. I that got, I it. got like one of those sample packs that had a little bit of electrum and a couple of their needles. Mm-hmm. And the first needle I used, I was like, Oh, these are good. Sheesh. Damn, Here, um, keep them. Thanks. You guys can have this. <laughs> Damn. We're supposed to give you gifts. What are we <laughs> with? What? What is it? Doesn't really matter. Cause it's mine, not yours. So, <laughs> I'll steal some later. (laughs) I hope you guys are enjoying this episode of the Unemployable Podcast. We have the Unemployable t-shirt. It's okay. Also, we have a variety of other clothing on the modelcitizenapparel.com. You can even use discount code CAMSUCKS for 10% off. Why are you guys standing behind me? Oh. We do have a gift to you from our sponsor, Saniderm. We've been giving these to all of our guests on the oh, podcast. Yeah, cool little, little bag. Thank you. Yeah, cool I, little Saniderm ah, bag. I gave you guys a gift first. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, thank, thank Give you. Give them another bag, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Saniderm. I'm going to look in it. I'm going to. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. There's a couple yeah. little goodies in oh, there. Oh, there's a hat? Yeah. I am a hat. It's not dude. Mighty Ducks, but. You know. It is not Mighty Ducks. <laughs> right, right. But it is cool. It's embroidered. And then we do love embroidery. Yeah, Everyone's been you. trying to steal those packs. I'm like, drop it. <laughs> the bags? Yeah. All the artists are like, ooh, oh, yeah, they're like hidden bags? around the shops. So they, they don't take them. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. It's like Actually, Easter their logo's pretty tight. That's a sweet sticker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, guys. Fuck yeah. Also, because you're going to forget to bring it up, the Baca Boys. Oh, my God. Don't forget to check out. So, yeah, check out Baca Boys on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, yeah. If you had to give a brief summary... About it, what would you say? Uh, so Baka Boys is just like just hanging out with like your two best friends. Like we just want to make content that was funny, dumb, and happy. Like I feel like there's so right. much like bummer content out there that like, stresses yeah. you out and stuff. So I was like, let's just just two grown dudes like putting makeup on each other <laughs> are watching me throw up a lot because I weirdly do that. I don't know why, but uh. But yeah, we just wanted to make funny content, so that's what it is. It's just two two dumb dudes being dumb. Hell yeah! <laughs> so watch that. Also, uh, you have tons of merch and stickers and yes. that kind of stuff. I make a shit ton of merch. If I wasn't a tattoo artist, I'd definitely be in merch right now. Um, yeah, so I have a merch drop coming in a couple weeks with a really cool T shirt I just designed. So. Stay yeah. Tuned. Stay All the tuned. links in the bio. Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable JP. Thanks again for joining us, man. It was awesome yeah. to have you. Thank you guys for having me. This was fun. Fuck oh, yeah. yeah. And we'll catch you guys next week. Subscribe.